sharing my screen and uh, we are recording this lecture. Okay, so again, good morning, everyone. It is. Uh, okay, you recall last week we discussed about uh, COEP. So the chapter that we are discussing right now is uh, a IoT protocols. Okay, mainly we are discussing about uh, messaging protocols, data messaging protocols. So we have seen MQTT, we have seen uh, COEP. Uh, now we're looking at our third uh, a protocol, which is AMQP. Okay, another messaging a protocol is called Advanced Message Queuing a protocol. Again, uh, relatively popular. Most popular, obviously, is uh, MQTT and then COEP and then AMQP. But so it's good to know that uh, there is the third one and how it is different from the other from the other two. So, so I think, <coughs> excuse me, with this will uh, end our discussion on IoT protocols as a, a, as well, okay? So you can check out the, on the, the module map, on the module catalog for this module. And uh, I think with this, uh, we will be ending our discussion on IoT protocols. We have one more discussion, if I'm not mistaken, on uh, fog and edge computing uh, before moving towards the different application areas for this, uh, for this semester. Okay, so this is where we are in the module as, as well. Uh, okay, so let's get started with respect to this, uh, a, to this uh, messaging protocol, the third uh, protocol that we, are, that we are discussing. It's not a, a lengthy discussion today. It will be relatively short, uh, a, a short, short one uh, because we have already done the other two protocol in detail. So I'll just browsing you through the third, a, the, the third one. Okay, so we are talking obviously about AMQ, AM, uh, AQP, which is uh, an open standard protocol used to pass messages between applications. So I, I, from the very outset, I can already tell you that uh, AMQP normally was not meant for IoT, actually. Okay, it was designed, it was proposed mainly uh, for machine-to-machine -machine communication in specific domains. Like I, I recall, Someone want to join again? Let me check. Okay, so so this uh, AMQP normally was proposed uh, for machine to communicate with machine. That is uh, in 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 especially in financial sector, in businesses in financial sector, they had developed this protocol. This simple easy to use that allow a machine to communicate with other machine and exchange uh, a, a data. So, and it, it was supposed to be a standard, uh, uh, this is why it says an open standard protocol, standardizing messaging to a common protocol allows for any software system, that is any uh, machine, implementing the protocol to communicate with any other system using the same protocol. This is the whole idea behind uh, AMQP that is allowing a machine to communicate with another machine seamlessly without any problem. So it is an open standard that has been standardized even by ISO, you know, the ISO, the ISO standard, the code is, the, is here, it was approved in 2014. So uh, it is like with this, why we are able to use it in IoT? Because from its uh, conceptualization itself, from the start itself, it was made lightweight, lightweight end-to-end -end protocol. This is, uh, this is the word here, corporate messaging protocol. Right after you, it was reserved for businesses, basically corporate means businesses, designed for reliability, security, provisioning, interoperability. So all these are characteristic of AM, AMQP. And the good thing is that you recall uh, the interaction model, uh, support for both, request response and publish subscribe. We have discussed a, a MQ, MQTT and COAP. Uh, let me put a question to the, to, to the class. Uh, which protocol uses request response? Which protocol 
users uh, uh, publish subscribe. Um, I, I, between the two protocols that we have already discussed, that is uh, a MQTT and COAP. Let's hear. Yes, Sigulam. So MQTT users publish subscribe. Yeah. And COAP users request response. Okay, good. This is it. Uh, COAP, you recall from last week, mainly based on the HTTP interaction interaction model, allow uh, your IoT to communicate to the internet that is uh, in HTTP. So we are, it is mainly request response. And obviously our MQTT was where you have a broker and everything, publisher, subscriber. So this is a published subscriber methodology. And whereas here, when we're talking about AMQP, it's about, it's about both. Both is... Uh, is available in AMQP. Let's proceed. So yes, primarily designed for enterprise application. This is why I've told you financial businesses, for example, uh, for server to server communication. This was its original aim, but however now it is also suitable for IoT application. This is why it has become the third most important uh, a, a IoT protocol actually after MQTT and COAP. This is why I have chosen, I've added it in my, in my lecture here. Yeah, uh, you recall also at the transport layer, uh, both uh, MQTT and COAP were using UDP, whereas here we are, st we are still using the TCP, which tends to be more heavyweight, complex and everything. This is why we were not using TCP for, uh, for the other, but this one is based on on, on TCP, uses TCP as a default transport uh, protocol. How its main advantage, yeah, it, it has uh, uh, a, an idea of store and forward feature, okay? That is, there is, just like you recall for MQTT, there was a broker that keep the message and then forward it to the, uh, to, to, to the subscriber. Here, there is something called a queue. This is why it's called messaging queue protocol, okay? There's a store forward feature that ensure reliability even after network disruption. This is an advantage of AMQP because uh, the message that the publisher or the sender is sending is stored somewhere in a queue. Even if there is disconnection, it will be there later, you can, you can send it. So this is a big uh, a feature of AMQP. It supports reliable communication via message delivery guarantee primitives. Yeah, There are some uh, different Q, uh, QoS level that can be used. Okay, to ensure delivery of, uh, of messages. And here we are talking about at most once, only, that is once uh, it is done and there is no acknowledgement, nothing. At least once, here there is acknowledgement, uh, you make sure that it has been received or whatever. And exactly, exactly once delivery. You're going to see this in future slides. So these are the uh, reliable communication that we have, the delivery guarantees primitives that we have in AMQP. So it, it, it requires reliable transfer, transport protocol. This is why in AMQP we reuse TCP and not, and not UDP. So in addition to being a common messaging protocol between systems, AMQP is designed with a few key features in mind. That is, it has security in mind, reliability in mind, because it try to ensure that the message has been delivered. Interoperability, one system communicating with another system. It is an open standard. So this is, these are the few uh, key features of AMQP. So features of, uh, offered include reliable queuing. There is a queuing strategy that is used there. Flexible routing can go to different places and the idea of transaction. You will see this as, uh, as we proceed here. Yeah, in ANQP, you have what is called producers, just like you have publishers and subscribers. Here we talk in terms of producers and consumers. You have producers of data, obviously your sensors, your sensors that capture those data, so they are producers of, of data. They send messages with routing keys. Okay, we are going to see what are those routing keys? Okay, uh, basically uh, this producer, it is producing what kind of data? So it, it has a routing key that is associated with it. And exchange names. We are going to see what is this exchange names. There is the idea of exchange, you know, an exchange in telephone system where all your call goes and then it decides where to forward the call. The same idea here is used uh, of, of an exchange, but you need to know which exchange that uh, you are sending this message message to, okay? 
So uh, the message normally has got a routing key and a, a, an exchange name, and it is sent to the to a broker. So we have the idea of broker again, again here in AM, AMQP. So broker brokers use exchange rules to route or filter messages. So there are some what is called exchange rules where where to send the message that we are getting from a producer. We apply a rule, then we decide where to forward this message to which. Uh, consumer because there will be consumers if we have producers on this side there will be consumers on the other side so the exchange rule will decide where to which consumer will be sending this uh, this message so brokers then use queues yeah so they have the idea of queues this is where a, the idea of store and forward there okay where the queues implement the idea of store and forward so we use queues to store and forward messages to consumers okay for a particular for a particular consumers actually queues are built for specific consumers okay you have a queue for a particular consumers and you you are going to see this as i i will show you the diagram it will become clearer so consumers receive messages from the broker for known queues so you recall in MQTT, a, a subscriber was subscribing to a particular topic. Here, it seems that consumers receive messages from the broker for known queues. It seems that a consumer normally uh, is associated to a queue. And messages, as soon as messages comes for a particular queue, uh, it gets those values that are coming in this in this queue. So it seems that consumers uh, is linked to a particular queue. We are going to see this uh, in our diagram. So you have a routing key. This is a producing where the producer when it produce it generate a routing key, which is congruent to a queue name. Yeah, congruent means it is matching. It match the routing key will match with a particular with a particular queue name. There is a queue. That this is a consumption. That is consumer they consume from queue. Producer they produce routing keys. Routing keys are linked with queue name. This is what how, how it happened in in amqp and exchanges only matter of <clears throat> only matter of routing and filtering rules so the exchanges normally will do this routing this linking or binding of uh, a particular message to a particular queue you're going to see this i think it should be coming here so messages are published to exchange so exchange get those messages from producers and exchanges distribute message copies to queues because a message can go in more than one queue as well. So this is why we have the idea of exchange here. Otherwise, producer will uh, communicate on directly to queue, but no, it doesn't uh, communicate directly to queue. It, it's, it's submitted to an exchange. The exchange will apply some rules, okay, in order to send the message that we have got cop message copies to queues using rules called bindings okay so those binding rules uh, the exchange will be used to know to which queue we need to send this particular this particular message so broker can then deliver messages to consumers so the broker the message has already reached a particular queue okay so that all subscribe to a particular queue so all consumers can fetch messages from queue on demand so you see here there are two strategies in the last bullet point on this slide broker can deliver messages to consumers this is uh, how we can say push you recall our push and pull uh, from last uh, from last week when we say broker can then deliver messages to consumers this is push as one will receive the message we send it to a to the subscriber oh all consumers can fetch this is pull consumers can fetch, fetch messages from a uh, queues on demand okay so here um, I, I want at a particular time to get a message from the queue so i can fetch it from from a particular queue that is from the consumer itself it fetched the the the, the message so there are two ways there is uh, in 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 amqp it seems that it is both push and pull that is available available there yeah i was waiting for this diagram this is this will make things clearer for a for, for, for you okay so what i have just explained is summarized in this uh, a diagram here so let me start from the publisher or producer let's call it since we we have consumer on this side let's call this one to be pub a producer yeah so the producer set a uh, there's a data that has been captured by a sensor here okay there's a data that has been captured the producer produced some message the message it goes to an exchange not to a queue 
not directly to EQ, but we publish the message to an exchange. The exchange uses some rules, some rules to connect it to a particular queue. Okay, the exchange will use, uh, normally this is the rule, the binding will be done by the exchange here, and it will put the, uh, publish or put the message, it will route the message to a particular queue. Now that the message in the queue, the consumer will consume the message from the, from the queue. This is called consumes here. Here there was the verb publish, here there is a verb routes, and here there is a verb a consume, where the consumer consumes from a particular from a particular queue. This is the whole idea behind AMQP. So if you are asked to compare, for example, MQTT and AMQP, so this is the major difference. In MQTT, for example, there is no exchange. Publisher published to a particular topic and, and subscriber subscribe to a particular topic. This is the broker. Okay, but here it is the broker. It seems that the broker is divided into two parts one which is called the exchange and one that is called the queue. And you will see as we proceed here the role of each one. Now, here, here's a scenario again to make things clearer. So, you have producers that produce data, it is sent messages if you want, it is sent to a particular exchange. You notice that a producer can communicate with more than one exchange as well. These are exchanges, the X here, these are exchanges. And then the exchange normally, they send the data to a particular queue or more than one queue. This is why uh, you see it here, depending on the rule that we are applying here, it will send it to more than one uh, queue. And then the consumer, they are linked to a particular queue. They can be linked to more than one queue uh, as, a, as well where this consumer is linked to only this queue, whereas this consumer, uh, it is linked to two queues here, this one and this one, while the down one here is linked only to this, to this queue here, okay? So what happened? Each message is stateless, consumers create queues. Yeah, normally the, it is a consumer that create the queue. It is a consumer that create the queues. These buffer messages, it will buffer messages for push to consumers. When the message will be coming, it will push it to a particular consumers. Okay, but you notice that the consumer create the queues. Queues are stateful, ordered, and can be persistent, private, shared. Exchanges are stateless, so consumers tell queues to bind to particular name exchanges. Yeah, it is the consumer that will tell this queue. Okay, you should be linked to that particular exchange. Okay, to bind name exchanges, each binding has a pattern. For example, to a Tony. It can be a particular a name or dot IBM. Okay. Producers send messages to exchangers with a routing key. The routing key can be, for example, Tony. So if this was given by the consumer and here the routing key is Tony, so these are matching. This is what earlier I've told you. Earlier I've told you this word congruent. Wait, here it is. A routing key producing is congruent congruent to a queue name. Okay, these two, they should be, they should be matching. This is what is happening. This is what is happening here. Producers send messages to exchanges with a routing key, for example, Tony, or, or ordered set of keys, for example, by .ibm .nyse. So this can be a, a, a set of keys as well. So exchanges, routes, messages to queues, <clears throat> whose binding pattern matches the message routing key. So these two should should uh, match the uh, the uh, queue name and the routing key. When they are matched, then the linking is done by the, the binding. The word here that is used is called binding. The binding is done by the uh, by the exchange. Here is the binding happening by the by the exchange. You will see an example if I'm not mistaken. Here it is an, an example. We have uh, producer Tony on this side. We have consumer Ivan and Andreas on, uh, a, on the a consumer side. Here it is. This is the scenario. We have two exchanges. Evans and uh, Anders wants to follow what Tony says. You see here? Evan and Anders wants to follow what Tony says. They can follow Tony by binding their queues to a uh, Rabbit MQ is the broker, okay, to a Rabbit MQ exchange using the pattern Tony. Okay, that pattern here is Tony. They agree that, and, and they can they can receive message from Tony if they bind their queue 
This Q is for Evan. This Q is for uh, Anders. They, this process should happen where we bind the queue to a particular to a particular exchange. The exchange updates events and unders queue accordingly for subsequent consumption by their client application. So this binding should happen first. Turning publisher the message is at work to the same uh, Rabbit MQ exchange using the routing key turning. And here these uh, queues they have used the uh, Turning a pattern in order to connect to a particular exchange. As soon as we have a, a, a producer producing something with Tony, okay, this goes, and in this case, it is happening here, down here. So you notice Tony is at work. He's sending a message, he's at work, goes to the exchange. The exchange knows that those two queues, they have shown interest in Tony. So they send the message to those two queues and, and and those two consumers, Evans and Anders, since a new message has come in the queue, they get this message by push. This is this is happening here. This is how AMQP works, uh, the communication mechanism works. Yeah, I, I mentioned also there are two level, three levels instead of quality of service that is provided in AMQP. Okay, at most, at, at most once. Okay, so message can be delivered at most one time. There is no retransmission in this case. Sender does not receive any acknowledgement about message received, and sender does not resend the message. We just send it once, that is, if the receiver receives it, uh, it's okay if the refer receiver don't receive it, we will not uh, retransmit because we are using at most, at most once. Then there is at least one. In at least once, message can be delivered one or more times. Okay, sender receive acknowledgement. So I'm expecting an acknowledgement by the receiver. If acknowledgement not received, then sender resend the message after some, some time, a time interval. So this is at least once. And then there's exactly once. Okay, the message is delivered exactly only one time to the receiver due to acknowledgement messages exchanged between the sender and the receiver. So it's only after exchanging those acknowledgement, then we send only once the, the, the message. So this is exactly, exactly once. Yeah, this is some security information that is provided in AMQP. It uses SSL and TLS, okay? Simple authentication and security layer for security. And this is a structure uh, of a AMQP message. It has got a header, message priority, time to leave, delivery count, number of times that this message has been uh, did a unsuccessful delivery. So we are number of retransmission. So message annotation properties, allocation properties, and body, body is uh, below the message that it is carrying. And then a footer, I think there's a diagram. Here it is. This is the diagram with the same uh, uh, attributes uh, here. And then the AMQP protocol library, yeah. This is uh, what I've, in all the protocols I have discussed with you, you notice I've uh, explained the same sequence. Uh, what the protocol is about, the characteristics of the protocol, how the protocol works, how messages are extended. I've used diagrams for this. And then uh, uh, whether there is QoS, like some characteristics, okay, QoS and everything. And then we talk about its implementation. Here is the, we are talking about the implementation of AM, AMQP. Okay, so it's a single common protocol missing allows for greater system integration across development, across different types of platforms and, and everything. Here's a list of some libraries for different programming languages that support AMQP. There is uh, C Sharp in .NET Lite, in Java, there is uh, Apache uh, a Cupid Java message service client that uses AMQP. In Python, again, Apache, uh, a Proton Python. Okay, PHP also, in PHP you can implement AMQP, in C you can implement AMQP with these libraries that are already available. Here is uh, in Apache Cupid, you have uh, uh, implementation in C++ and Java. Microsoft Azure normally implement AMQP, there is Azure a IoT a Hub. In IBM, there is IBM MQ Lite uh, that implement, uh, that provide AMQP and Rabbit MQ, the example that we were looking at, it uh, implements AM, AMQP. This is an online a broker that you may that you may use. I, I'm providing the link at the end of the slides as a, as well. Yeah. Now, now that I have discussed MQTT, COEP, 
and EMQP. So uh, some some lab work for this uh, uh, for this week. I think last week I've told you to compare MQTT and COAP. Now I'm going to add one more there. Compare MQTT, COAP, and EMQP as messaging protocols for for IoT. So you may uh, discuss about resource requirements, reliability of connection, QoS, interoperability, and everything. Okay, especially in their communication mechanism that uh, that they use. Try to compare those uh, those three protocols. I have not been too long with respect to AMQP. It it was quite uh, short uh, short discussion, and uh, you see some resources here, RabbitMQ that I've just mentioned, uh, then some YouTube video about uh, AM AMQP. So it was not as after you. This one was not a lengthy a lengthy discussion. But uh, let me also uh, show to you with respect to where we are in this module, what has been completed and where we are in this 2021. Okay, here it is. 